Ni hao from Wes and Amy. Today we'll be brewing an all grain batch of Belgian white beer right here at home. We bought the materials off of Taobao here in China, which is just a, a very big website. Um, you can buy anything you want. They sent it to us. It, re- it arrived in this reused cardboard milk box, which, to be honest, I kind of like that. I don't need a brand new shiny cardboard box. I think this is great for the planet. So inside we have a total of, of five kilos of different types of grain. There's two kinds of hops in this recipe and what gives Belgian white beer its distinctive taste. So we have orange peel and coriander seed. And here's a recipe. Um, I had a little issue with the amount of water that it was recommending, so I tweaked it a little bit, but in the end, it worked out really well. Brew day has about six or seven steps, depending how you count it. So we'll start here, step number one, that's grinding our malted barley. You will see me adjusting the grind size. It's really important. Ideally, each grain, uh, you're going to crack it into maybe three or four pieces, so you'll see that white part there. Um, when we soak it in the next step, that white will convert into sugar and turn into a really sweet sugar water. But if you do it too small, then it's going to clog up our tubing. So you'll see that later. Basically keep grinding until all your grain is finished and you're definitely going to make a mess. So it's helpful if you have this little guy, this little robot to help you clean up. The next step here is the mash. And that's basically just soaking all of this grain in hot water and that hot water will convert via enzymes it will convert um, the grain into sugars which later gets converted into alcohol which makes beer so today for the mash we're using 65 degrees celsius water uh, a little tip is to go slightly higher than that maybe 67 so when you put in your grains the temp will drop uh, down to what you want i have 20 liters or so in here at the moment and you'll see that this container, it's called a mash tun, it's insulated to keep the water hot. And it has a double bottom, which makes it easier when we empty out our wort. So that's a fancy way of just saying liquid pre-beer, it's called a wort. So after 90 minutes, we're back to uh, lotter our wort, which is another fancy word of just saying empty it out. To make sure that we get every last bit of sugary goodness out of our grain, now we're going to sparge it which basically is a fancy word for pour more hot water on it. So we're going to rinse the grains with more hot water. Now the next step is to start boiling our wort. Now it takes a while to get it up to boiling, but this is what you want to see. Uh, you want to see a rolling boil. And once you get it going, you can turn it down just slightly so it's not uh, evaporating too much. This needs to go for a few minutes before we start adding our flavor and our hops. It's usually done in stages. Here I'm adding Golding's hops and some orange and some coriander seed. Now we're 45 minutes in, I'm going to add some Czech hops. And what you're looking at now is our cooling coil going in. And that's really important in our next step. I put it in now so that the boiling water will sanitize it for me. Here we have our final hops and flavor addition uh, right before we finish boiling here at about 65 minutes. Now it's really important to get your beer cooled down to about 27 degrees Celsius, um, or you'll kill the yeast when you put it in in the next step. So this is the wort chiller. It takes cold water into the tube from one end. As it goes through the tubing, the tubing is heated, and the cool water pulls away that heat. It conducts it away, uh, thereby cooling our wort. So you have cold water in, and ideally you have hot water by the time it comes out the other end. I like to move the chiller around like this that you see me doing. Um, that seems to help uh, cool it a little quicker. When you hit your target temperature or slightly above it, you can transfer your wort to your already sanitized fermenter. Now the next step is to pitch your yeast, which is a fancy way of just saying pouring your yeast in. Next step, close up your container, seal your fermenter with an airlock, put it in a dark place, and wait. You should start seeing bubbles like this fairly soon. Um, usually within a day or so, the bubbles will eventually stop, but that doesn't mean it's done. That just means you have to let it sit. So it, I usually let it sit for a week to 10 days, depending on the kind of beer and depending on how busy I am. And then the next step is bottling. Stay tuned for that video coming up in a week to 10 days uh, because we'll be bottling this exact batch of beer. And that is it. See you next time for more.